I am your DM body, and I'm glad to see you found your way back to Pokemon Cross D&D, a series where we'll explore story through character design pulling from two of my favorite obsessions. However, you must be wary, Traveler, as there are spoilers ahead, so be sure to check out last week's session to get caught up on all the lore. A bolt of sizzling energy whizzed right by Chester, and the party was gathered into formation once again. The Demogorgon wasn't the only entity in the forest that had been watching them, it seemed. Slowly, all around the party, piercing red eyes began to illuminate through the dark of the trees. Zasha motioned for Curtis to hide behind her, holding out her rusted shield. Chester, the team's newest member, covered the other side. Not these things again. What are we looking at? asked Zasha. Machines built for wars of the past, but they've been recently reactivated. Their life energy reads eerily similar to the Demogorgon and other demons I've been hunting. Strange thing is that I've never encountered this many at one time. Another bolt of energy whizzed past the group. With Xerneas light! A glowing dome of light surrounded the party. They're looking for me, sighed Curtis. Chester looked at the boy, puzzled. More on that later. We need to think of a plan or else we're Swiss cheese, cried Saba. Obliterate! 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 New energy signal detected! The Clay Dolls. Relics of Destruction. What powers these entities are a mystery to most, but folktales claim that these man-made golems are possessed by the spirit of fallen warriors seeking revenge. Historians believe that the Clay Dolls are the first incarnation of a group of sentient machines now known as the Warforged. Clay Dolls operate as a hive mind, and have been the deciding factor in countless wars held in the past. Equipped with incredible optics and able to gather information all around them in seconds, clay dolls, while relics of the past, are considered advanced technology even in the modern day. They are able to fire concentrated bolts of energy from any of their eyes, and their bodies come in many variations that are only limited by the imagination of their creator. Clay dolls lack any sort of free will, operating on the order of the summoner who programs them with ancient magics. These summoners are usually masters of the dark arts, and must be within range to relay their commands to a troop of clay dolls. Without a master, clay dolls fall apart, figuratively and literally, and thus seeking them out is the premier option in defeating such terrifying foes. Let's take a brief moment to rest here, Traveler. Here's this week's quest board, which has an all new question of the day. Be sure to respond in the comments below. The party is on their last legs fighting a boss. Which Pokemon would you want on your team to represent the Cleric to heal you all to safety? Why can't you guys play nice? A curious voice echoed out from the dark of the woods when a clay doll erupted in a fiery explosion. The surrounding clay dolls turned to see their ally fall in unison. Now's our chance, shouted Zasha. She raised her sword, firing off her own energy blast and hitting a clay doll square in its back. Nice shot, shouted out a voice from the darkness. Get the boy out of here, grunted Zasha. Saba grabbed the boy's arm, and in an instant, vanished. Chester gathered himself before swinging out his flail in one quick motion, the weapon extending out at great length as it crashed through several of the clay dolls. The party, having barely survived the Demogorgon fight, were on their last legs and weak. Saba could no longer uphold their invisibility spell, and both they and Curtis sat like fish in a barrel amidst the battlefield. Curtis's eyes began to close when out of the corner of his vision caught a small orb of light flying into the sky. It exploded into fireworks and began to rain over the party, lifting up their haggard spirits. Sorry I'm late, but better late than never. Sylvie Anya, the Envoy of Joy. The youngest child of the renowned Anya family, Sylvie is perhaps the most determined and outgoing of her kin. In keeping up with the legacy of her family name, she studies the mystic arts as an apprentice to the legendary witch Tasha. Under her tutelage, she aims to be a cleric to cleanse the darkest blights of the world. Wielding a staff crafted from rare oak, Sylvie is able to conjure magics with a focus on healing. She is a kind-hearted spirit who always wears a smile on her face, and enjoys studying magic as much as she relishes in the effects of performing her arts to make the world a better place. Sylvie hopes to become as decorated as her older siblings of the Anya clan and thus places a great burden of expectation on her own shoulders. Even still, she's fearlessly optimistic and believes that making friends with everyone she meets will be the way to grow her nurturing spirit, thus becoming the change needed to help see the world through its current era of darkness.
With Sylvie, the party managed to clear out the remaining clay doll. We can't yet rest. The clay dolls can't operate wh Wait. The young cleric affixed her eyes to Curtis' bone. The symbols on your weapon? They're the same that decorate the clay dolls. Curtis's expression shifted to fear. The boy looked at his bone, and a vision of the fire that burned his village pulsed throughout his mind. No, I'm not like them. Curtis looked at the faces around him, and then upon the crystal orb. Slowly, a green light began to glow throughout the bone club just before flames erupted out of the end. That day in the village, it can't be. The boy's eyes widened. Did I? That day in the village, the fire. It was me. Thank you, Traveler, for joining me on today's adventure. Be sure to complete all of your tasks on the quest board before we set out on our next session. I've been Bonnie, your DM and artist. Until next time, safe travels, Traveler. Traveler.